Appreciate you joining us. Uh, the next speaker is probably familiar to most of you, Antonio Malarino. Uh, works as hard or harder than anybody else that I know within our department. He is Mr. Phosphorus in the state of Iowa. Uh, in fact, he's probably for most of the Midwest. So without taking more of his time, Antonio, the podium is yours. Thank you, Rick. I think I prefer to use this if it works. And your computer is still studying the device software, so I don't think we have a, 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 a clicker to change slide. Uh, thank you, Rick, for those words. I try to contribute what I can. I have a, for phosphorus, I have one leg into the agronomic issues and the crops and the other one in water quality. So I work in that area in between. What that means is I'm not an, an expert on anything. <laughs> uh, thank you for the encouragement to contribute a talk here. This is a tough audience because it's very diverse. So this would be too technical, too boring for some, and too shallow for others. So I apologize for that. Um, yeah, it seems that, uh, let me see if it's working. Yeah, it's working. Okay, when we talk about phosphorus, we essentially uh, like to talk about the total phosphorus that is lost from field, the total concentration or amounts in or loads in runoff. But we have several fractions, but there are two uh, that are very important that we can divide or study the phosphorus in the runoff. Is the particulate P or phosphorus bound somehow to soil particles. This has a slower uh, but long term impact on water quality. Okay? It depends a lot on the chemistry of the soil, but also the chemistry and the other characteristics of the receiving water. In Iowa, when we put together the index many years ago, uh, we have this sentence that says that about 70% of the um, phosphorus delivered to Iowa lakes, of the particular P delivered, will be available for a long time. Okay? Uh, then we have the dissolved phosphorus, which are different forms, uh, but the dissolved phosphorus has a large but often short-term impact in water quality, again, depending on the hydrology uh, of the receiving water. Uh, most of the phosphorus in subsurface drainage is dissolved phosphorus, uh, but then in surface runoff, there is a very, very variable proportion of, of dissolved phosphorus there. Now, both are important, the short-term and the long-term, both are considered by the Iowa P index, okay, in terms of the assessment of the risk of uh, total phosphorus loss or one or the other form. And uh, in the in the nutrient reduction strategy, we have emphasized for now total phosphorus because there is both. Uh, now, we the, the title of the talk relates to TDEFs and time error runoff and things like that. So there are a few things that we need to remember that happen in Iowa. And Iowa is not the same than the Vermont or Maryland or the Chesapeake Bay. See? Uh, no till, it's obvious we have data that reduces erosion a lot. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that's one of the brutal realities that Tom Francis was talking about. It tends to reduce corn yield, not necessarily the economics of corn production. Um, there is no yield response to phosphorus placement or time of application in Iowa, even for no till. There's research for 50 years showing that. This is very important because the placement of the phosphorus to the soil, of course, may affect the losses we are not, but has no impact on, the, on yields. Uh, so essentially, things that uh, try to apply the phosphorus more precisely or uh, injected or something in the soil uh, will not affect yield, may be good for water quality, but it's a cost for the farmer. The 
then we know that incorporation or injection of manure, okay, is uh, is good for nitrogen management and other control. And uh, and if we inject or ban or incorporate phosphorus with tillage, we should reduce runoff phosphorus loss if soil erosion and the runoff are not increased. The tillage operations always tend to increase a bit the erosion or runoff. And then the other thing that we knew for, for a long time, although we may have not quantified very well, is that the timing of the operation, the feed operations, and of the runoff events after application of the phosphorus, and the phosphorus source are key issues for phosphorus loss. Now, what is that most farmers do? And this is dangerous, because of course there are all kinds of farmers, from the Tom Francis to some of the others. But Everybody agreed that the spring in Iowa is not a good practical time to apply fertilizer. Okay. Uh, we all, with few exceptions, we have wet soils, we have rain, we have little time to do the operation. Uh, essentially, as soon as the soil uh, thawed, you know, we need to start getting ready for planting. Uh, so most apply the manure before corn. That's another thing because of nitrogen. Uh, they need to empty pits or stock piles. And, uh, and then in the, in the fall, there is uh, drier soil and lots of time to do it. So much of the manure that's going on in Iowa uh, and the fertilizer buffer is applying the fall. But then on the other hand, we tell them, don't till the soil in the fall, especially soybean resin that's bad for soil erosion. Apply manure nitrogen as late as possible in the fall or in the spring. So we have some uh, apparent contradictions there because if we tell them they are applying the fertilizer of the manure in the fall or when I tell them don't feed in the fall, of course that would be applied to the surface. Okay. Uh, if we say apply all the fault of the manure in the, in the spring, that's a dream. We're not Many will do that. Some will do, but not everybody. Um, so those are some of the issues that we decided to look at. So in this presentation, we're going to just, just summarize quickly some research done since we developed the B index. Some of these results were incorporated in the nutrient reaction strategy. Uh, we look at effects of the phosphorus source, tillage, and time to a runoff event on phosphorus loss per surface runoff. Um, Studies were conducted in the field and the natural rainfall or simulator rain during the um, full scale, feed scale, or large plots or large watersheds you know, in the field to compare many treatments is very expensive. You know, essentially, it's not doable. And then we look at uh, several runoff fractions, but today I will talk mainly at the soil reactive P. Okay, we have uh, this is the most common dissolved phosphorus measure. But we also measure total dissolved P. See, not all the dissolved phosphorus is dissolved reactive P. Now, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this too much, but it can be essentially the, the additional dissolved phosphorus could be zero to maybe sometimes up to 50% for the dissolved P in the soil. Uh, and then, of course, total P. So I'll start with some of the rainfall simulations because that was when we started mainly. And I emphasize these are short-term evaluations. We use a uh, rainfall simulator and techniques that was developed by a national phosphorus runoff project that was developed in the early 2000 for about five, six years. That we have several of these simulators standardized all over the United States. The project ended, but I keep using that simulator fixing here and there. Um, one of the things that we did, because we did not have this information, we developed the, the B index for Iowa or for uh, similar conditions, is to look at the impact of the phosphorus source and phosphorus loss immediately after the application. Okay. So what we did here, this is without incorporation. We applied mostly soybean residue, so we applied always the same amount of phosphorus, 50 kilos per year, that's about 100, 112. To five. Um, and then there was no incorporation, and then we uh, applied runoff within 24 hours. And I said we, 
Although when I should say actually Mazar, Mazar Hack is my co-author is there. Where is it? In my right hand and my right brain and all these things. Uh, so what we found there, these are averages across 21 fields. We worked over two years in 21 audio fields. You saw one of the pictures there. Is that there is a tremendous difference between the photos, <coughs> mainly concerning what's fertilizer that we used up, the ammonium phosphate, and the manures. Uh, the gray bar is the total P, and the, the dissolved P, what is over here to P in this case, is the black bar. So this is the major difference. Uh, this is a uh, phosphorus loss. When we apply fertilizer, uh, it's by far, and we get rain or a runoff event immediately after application, that phosphorus goes of the field. Uh, it's less with liquid soil manure. Remember, all of this applied to the surface, not incorporated. And it's much less with poultry manure than with cattle manure. So this is short term. Okay? We don't have a long term experience to measure what happened over, over the years. Uh, and then I put in blue here, that's one of the main objectives of the presentation, what's the impact of the source on the proportion of the soil P or the total P in the runoff. And we can see very clearly it's much lower in the solid manures, uh, much higher in the fertilizer. And is uh, about intermediate in, in the liquid manure. So remember what I, also, I, I didn't put that in there, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference the source of phosphorus for crops, but it's essentially the, the availability of phosphorus in animal manure is essentially 90 to 100% in, in swine manure and in poultry manure. In beef manure, we were saying 60 to 100. Now I just finished a research with support for the local center. It's about 85, 90 to 100 percent. So this is important then because when we apply fertilizer and it rains, that's where the major issue is. It's not as much with the manure. Then we added uh, another complication to this research. Uh, we work only with fertilizer, liquid swine, and poultry manure. <coughs> what we did here, we applied the same amount of phosphorus. But we change the timing of the runoff event. So in one treatment, we ran within 24 hours of the application. Again, no incorporation to the surface, as if it were no till. Uh, then we ran within 10 days. And then the other treatment was what we call 10 days wet, was because we applied, and then we simulated a very light rain, just to get that phosphorus reacting with the salt surface but did not produce for now. So here we have the salt phosphorus here, okay, on the left, and here we have total phosphorus loss on the right. So there are a few things that we found here. First of all, look at the fertilizer. As we showed before, a very high proportion of the uh, runoff is the salt phosphorus, okay? The scales are the same in both. Uh, in soil manure, it's, it's about the same when we, we rain within the 24 hours. Uh, again, as we saw before, much less losses for the manures. Soil manure, again, kind of intermediate, but closer to the poultry manure than to fertilizer. Um, and then, if we look here at the percent, of the uh, of the of the of, of the percent of the salt P of the total P is not really much different. It's not consistent. So the other important thing here is that a small delay, even of ten days, of the phosphorus just sitting there on the soil surface, really reduces the amount loss with runoff. So this is the 24-hour loss with fertilizer. It's about half just by waiting 10 days for that rain to come. Uh, if we did a little bit of wet, there was a little bit of rain in between, we further cut. In soil manure, also, there is a very important <coughs> proportion of change. And it's also important for the poultry manure, but not as much, because we are having actually much less possible loss there. So it is key then 
that the timing of the runoff event in terms of the impact of fossil fuel application to the soil soil. And we have been discussing for years with Ray Cruz how this could, how we could work with this to do better recommendation in terms of the application. Many of us are making manure in terms of the expected uh, timing of a runoff event. Here we com com complicated things a little bit more, uh, and we <coughs> included uh, incorporation treatment, and we did it by disking here. So what we have here is the the 24 hours runoff event of the application without incorporation to the soil. This was incorporated by, by disking before the, the runoff. And we had another treatment that was the no-till, the not incorporated, but then we did the rain 10 days later, just to look at the delay. We didn't have enough funding, so we didn't look at the at the 24 at the incorporated treatment 10 days after. We couldn't include that treatment. So in this case, I have black diesel P, gray the total P, again, again, the same thing. These are different experiments. The fertilizer is the highest loss, uh, much lower in liquid manure and poultry manure. And, um, and then the important thing here, again, not much uh, difference between the sources in terms of the proportion of this whole P or the total P. But look at this difference here across the three charts. This is without incorporation, rain within 24 hours. This is incorporating this all by disking uh, a 24 hour event. So by incorporation, the fertilizer will reduce the loss to less than half. And the major impact was on fertilizer. Yes, there was an impact also in liquids and manure, but it was less. And there was also an impact, but not that much in poultry manure. But then the key is this again. Look at what happened. We just put it there on the surface. We didn't, we didn't have enough event for 10 days. Uh, we really reduced the losses of all of them. And in fact, for fertilizer, it was even less loss than if we incorporated it. Yes, sir. Quick question. Are you attributing that to it being attached to the soil particles? Exactly. You see, the, the, the phosphorus, when we apply phosphorus in the field, we are not applying to this table. Okay. That phosphorus, especially if it is wet, start to react and start to be retained, not fixed. There's almost no fixation in the soil. It starts to be retained with the soil. So then when the rain comes delayed, then there is this coming out. And in some cases, in the short term, it's better to have a delay in the runoff event than not to have incorporation. Because, of course, incorporation increases the, the, the chance of loss. This is important. I will come up to this later because this is very practical. Okay. This comes directly to the heart of when it's better to apply the phosphorus to the surface without incorporation either. But it's not the spring. It's not the winter. Maybe the fall. Okay, now let's consider the rate factor now, application rate. This was a very neat study. Now we use liquid manure. Uh, we apply several rates up zero to up to 50 kilos of P. This is about 112 or 100. That's 100 pounds of P2O5 per acre. So what we did here, the top charge is dissolved phosphorus. The lower ones is the total phosphorus. Okay. Here we had a runoff event within 24 hours of application of the liquid manure without incorporation into the soil or incorporating by disk. Okay. In this case, we waited 15 days, about 15 days, in order to have the runoff event. Or we waited six months. So we have the, the, the plots uncovered, and when it's going to come in rain or snow, we try to cover it. So we didn't have any cover there. So look at the impact of rate, okay, on the fossil loss. Essentially, a linear increase. 
without incorporation. When we incorporate, we cut that but less than half. This code confirmed what we found in the other spring. But then look what happened just by waiting 15 days for that runoff. There was essentially no statistical difference. Even this difference here with the high rate was not statistically different. So incorporation or incorporation doesn't make a difference. Six months later, it makes a difference. That's the top and bottom of both? Huh? Top and bottom of charts are both insignificant? Yeah. Now, here is total. See? Now, this is not significant here six months later, but still on average, the, the non-incorporated had a little bit more loss than incorporated, but it was about the same. Now, the other interesting thing here is that look at, of course, the, the effect of rate was linear, you know? And uh, uh, we recommend, depending on the soil test, up to 100 pounds of the 205, which is about 50 kilos for corn or soybean in Iowa. But you know there are many people out there that for some reason they want to build that fast. When the soil test is low, they recommend fertilizer to build that. Why? <laughs> and this is some of the things that I am in my extension work emphasizing a lot over the last two, three years. Because it's not good for the economics of the farmer. It's not good for water quality. We should stop doing that build down. And it's happening a lot out there. Okay. The other thing is that if you look at the proportion, does the soil of the total P increases a lot with the rate. Okay. So especially when we don't have to apply all that high rate, okay, we are creating more risk really because we are increasing the total total loss, but we are increasing especially the dissolved P. And that happened with fertilizer or, or with liquid manure. This is another great example. Again, we didn't have much money here. We have this is poultry manure. We have eight fields that we apply essentially uh, no no poultry manure, a low rate and a high rate. See, the high rate is about <coughs> what will be needed if we want to supply all the nitrogen to, to the corn. So that's one problem with poultry manure. Okay. We apply four or five tons, which is needed to supply the nitrogen. So the, the availability of nitrogen in poultry manure is about half. Okay, so you need to apply more in order to supply that. We are applying phosphorus for three, four, five crops. That's one of the problems with poultry manure. Okay, and we see the same thing. See, here we have control, low manure, high manure. With the high manure, of course, there's higher losses, dissolved and total, and also the proportion of the phosphorus that is lost that is dissolved is much higher with the high rate. Another, another point to say, apply the phosphorus that you needed for crops, but don't try to build that faster than you need. It's not good for economics, it's not good for water quality. Now, let's consider something else now, which is the amendments to poultry. Now, we went with poultry because there was some research done in the south and in the east, adding gypsum or alum, aluminum sulfur, to, to poultry manure to try to reduce the salt phosphorus loss when poultry manure is applied. This is something we did a few years ago. This is super complicated, I'm sorry, but I wanted to show everything in one slide. So what we combined here was the runoff event timing, 24 hours event, uh, no tillage, 24 hours with disking, with tillage, or 10 days delay in the event with no till. And we put the same amount of phosphorus, <coughs> and then we have the, this was egg layers manure. So we use alum, which is aluminum sulfate, gypsum, and then the manure and treated. These are averages of three years different sites. And when I put here was in green, the dissolved P, this is phosphorus loss, and in yellow, the total P. So we see that with the 24 hours event, 
there is not much difference in the total cost of loss between the spread that. But the application of alum really drastically reduce a lot the loss of the salt fish manure. And what we did here, we put some big fruit manure, and then we applied some extra while we were applying the manure, immediately after applying the manure. And the gypsum, did, it wasn't, this wasn't statistically, statistically significant. I didn't put the letters, the LSD letters there. In the 24 hours with, with tillers, there was more loss. Okay, we did tillage. Of course, it depends on the slope and all the stuff. Uh, and again, the alum was better than the gypsum uh, are reducing the salt beam. And when we look at the 10 days, for some reason, I still were scratching our heads. There wasn't much difference between the alum uh, and, and the gypsum. But, but this is, a, and I did this with a funding from the Iowa Aid Council. And, uh, and I'm, I, I believe that this is something good that should try to be implemented now. It's not easy. It's easy with broilers or turkeys. So you just go spread that uh, thing, you know, in the barn uh, with uh, wet uh, egg layers manure. It's complicated. But we believe that it could be applied to the field too. Now the alum has some issues, tend to acidify the soil, but not with poultry manure because they lay in manure actually increases soil pH. So we don't have much of a problem. And gypsum, really, we should work more on this, but it didn't do much in comparison with that. Uh, and then, then we look at the proportions here, you know, it, it says clearly. I mean, if we are targeting uh, the soil P, we are trying to really, reduce. it's not just a total P loss from P, but it's soil P because it has that short-term uh, large uh, impact. Uh, the, the, this, this treatment with alum <coughs> is, uh, is very good. It's practically economical. We should look at it. But I think it's very good. OK, then we have one study that we uh, implemented uh, a few years ago in northern Iowa. And I will go very quick, because I'm talking too much already. Um, for for six years, this was a soil that tested optimum in pea. So we wanted to look what happened with the application of pea-based manure or fertilizer. Both apply the same. With no till or chiller or, 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 or tillers with chisel flow disc on fossil runoff and soil. And in the last few years, we changed some treatments, and we are looking at the effect of placement, broadcast or planted bank fertilizer. I just have a few slides. This is what happened with the soil loss. It just documented what we know, that no-till really reduced fossil loss. The interesting thing that we measured, which is more than what I thought before, is that the main issue of no-till reducing soil loss is on corn when we plant on soybean residue. Soybean residue on sorry, soybean growth. Soybean residue is not good for soil loss in comparison with corn. Look at the losses here with soybean planted on corn residue and the soil loss with corn planted on soybean residue. This is where really it works. Then when we look at the, at the impact on the soil or total <coughs> loss, here we have the fertilizer. And what we did, we applied the double rate before the corn, as most farmers do and inject the soil manure. So the source of, of the fossil didn't make any difference, statistical difference. So applying the fertilizer or pea-based manure, this is a key. It's pea-based manure, okay? We complement it with, with fertilizer as needed. And then we saw a reduction, no till, re reduced total uh, um, fossil loss. But then look what happened with the dissolved pea. We still as 20% of the runoff phosphorus was dissolved, it's 50% was with uh, no till. Now with manure, it's a little bit less the difference, maybe it's because this was injected and it was applied growth. So no till does reduce our loss, it does reduce phosphorus loss, 
but can increase the proportion of the dissolved phosphorus in that runoff. And this we have only two years and very variable and not much rain in Northwest Iowa for the comparison of the placement. This is broadcast. It was a systems comparison. The double rate before corn for the rotation and planter banded for each crop each year. There's no difference. So we have to go with care when we encourage subsurface application of phosphorus in Iowa, even in North Carolina. That's great for water quality, theoretically, but it's a cost to the farmer. And in these two years, we didn't see any difference at all. So we are continuing to this experiment. So in conclusion, in the short term, loss of the soil or, or total P loss was largest for fertilizer, liquid manure, and solid manure. Larger difference were without incorporation. The percent of the soil P of the total P had followed the same ranking but there was smaller and less consistent difference. <coughs> the percent is all P of the runoff increased with the P rate. Okay, we should not apply more P than actually is needed for crops. And this is just, I, I cannot talk too much about this, but analysis of soluble P in the, the water, soluble P in the manure was not a good index in order to, to describe these results. And the other important result is that runoff delay does reduce the large total P losses that we have with fertilizer and manure, especially when we have uh, uh, loss of ice over the surface, okay, applied to the surface. There is no clear effect on the proportion of this or P. And often, according to our research, a delay in the runoff event in our till was as effective as tillers or better at reducing the losses of both the result P and the runoff. From the study in Northwest Iowa with natural rainfall, we saw the North Hill does reduce soil loss, no doubt, especially in soil inversion. It also reduced total below, but proportionally less than the losses we saw. And increased without doubt a lot the, the percent of the soil P of the total P. Now, this is the proportion, but because North Hill also reduced the total P loss, it slightly increased the dissolved below. Okay? So increased it, reduced total below, increased the proportion, but when all these things balance, the increase in the salt below uh, from the non-till is not that much. This is important for many things that we are hearing in the press of what's happening in Northern Ohio. When the soils and the climate are completely different. Okay, and then up to now, this is the only study I know in the United States that is looking in, in, in the field, impact of fossil placement method of fossil runoff. And for now, in these two years, we have not seen a difference between broadcast when he's applying the fall versus planted banded in the spring. So, I know Rick is there standing already. I think that reducing soil and total P loss is badly needed top priority in Ireland. Yes, we need to pay attention to the soil loss. But in my opinion, we need to be careful when we hear things from Northern Ohio. We need this is the key issue that we need to work in Ireland, my view. And along the way, pay attention to the soil loss. Surface supply fertilizer, liquid manure, in PG with low probability of runoff. When is that in Iowa in the fall? And that's an issue. Because with manure, we tell farmers for the nitrogen apply as late as possible or apply in the spring, in the spring. And then I come for phosphorus, I apply as soon as possible after harvest. The fertilizing is easy, there's no easy with manure. And then we are continuing with this study of the placement. And we have now a couple of experiments that we are looking at the impact of forward crops the result and the total loss with the manure. Sorry, I'm kind of late.
No apologies needed. Um, we're, we're squeezing into the break time, so let's do this. Those that do want to, uh, to, to leave, no offense to Antonio, go ahead. Will you stick around to answer questions for those that want to, want to stay? Yeah, please. Thank you.